John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Our video today is going to go over the primary functions of Gaia GPS, which is well regarded as one of the top wilderness navigation apps that you can use to find your way in the backcountry with your iPhone. We're going to go over three core functionalities of the app. One is importing a GPX track to view or follow on your map. Second is downloading map layers that cover that track or your area of interest. And third, we're going to show how to add a waypoint and use the guide me, show me function to get to that point. First, importing a track. I find the easiest way to do that is to email it to yourself. And I'm going to go into my mail app here. Here is a GPS track from Mount St. Helens, and that's what it looks like when I open it in mail. Notice the file attachment at the bottom with the gray box around it. What I want to do here is what Apple calls a long touch, which is holding my finger on that square for about four seconds. Be patient here. I know you can't see my finger, but something cool is going to happen. Then we get a pop-up box that says open in Gaia GPS. Let's tap that icon. And in a moment, the app should launch. If we be patient here for a sec, we'll see a little message that says ah, all imports complete. That's good. That means your track was brought into the software. We can view your tracks by going to the upper left hand icon on the top menu, on the top uh, row of icons, which is the menu icon. It looks like three uh, horizontal lines. Let's tap that one time. And here we can see all of our saved tracks, routes, waypoints, maps, etc. We just imported a track, so let's tap tracks once. And hey, cool, there we see our track from GPSs that was imported. If we want to change the color of this track, I can tap on just the icon of the track itself. I like to change it to something obnoxiously purple because that's not on any map. We're going to save that and now our track has changed. To view our track on the map, we can tap it once and then we'll pull up show on map. We now have our GPS track overlaid on a map of Mount St. Helens. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's our first task. Next, we want to download maps that cover our area of track. To do that, we go back to the top row of icons, and now we're going to click in the top right corner, which is the map layer icon. Looks like three stacked up pieces of paper with the top one being white. If we tap that once, we can see the three map layers that are available to us. Currently, we're on cycling topo, which actually I find very helpful for hiking because the contours are pretty good, there's a little shaded relief, and it shows a lot of hiking trails. Let's go through these three layers quickly. Let's tap US Topo, and notice in the map sliver on the left, uh, the underlying image has changed. Now we've got a USGS topographic map series, seven and a half minute, uh, drawn up over our GPS track. Back to map layers, if we then choose, say, a satellite image, we can tap that. Uh, we have the satellite image underneath, and Mount St. Helens looks pretty awesome in satellite view. So for the purposes of our hike, we're going to download two map layers that will allow us to use our phone when we're out of cell phone range. One is the satellite view, and one is the uh, cycle topo map. For satellite view, uh, let's go back, let's start with cycling topo. We have to select that layer to be active, and then we're going to check or tap rather download maps. Now let's look at a few things here. First we've got a red selection box which we can move around. Secondly notice at the top we've got a maximum zoom slider which shows your map scale and the size of the downloaded um, the size of the rectangle actually which the present is 47 map tiles and 700 or so kilobytes. Clearly we can see that the red box does not cover our track, so we can drag to select. And as I do that, keep an eye on the tile and the, the tiles and the file size at the top. As I'm increasing the size of the box, we've gone from 700 kilobytes up to a meg and a half or so, depending on the size of the box. That file size will also increase as you move the slider bar and the zoom up or down, but for hiking, 1 to 24,000 is a great number, and we're going to leave it at that. So that looks like a pretty good selection box which covers our hike. It's one and a half megs. That should download pretty fast. That's cool. When you're ready to 
uh, save your map, you simply tap save in the lower right hand corner. You want to give your map a nice name. Let's call it St. Helens. And then tap download. A little, little spinner bar should start doing its thing in the upper right corner. That tells you your map is downloading. Depending on your Wi-Fi or connection speed, that can take anywhere from a few seconds to a minute or so. And now to see that our map has actually been saved, we're going to go back to the menu in the upper left corner. Single tap on that. Under Save, we want to tap Maps. And there it is, 93 tiles, Mount St. Helens. We got one map. Let's go back to our map screen. And now we're going to download a satellite image of the same area. One more tap on the map layer in the upper right hand corner. Load satellite imagery. Tap on the left. And that looks good. One more tap on the map layer and let's choose download maps. Let's notice a couple of things here that are going on. One, we've got our familiar red box with the blue dots on it. But underneath in the background, which is a really cool feature of this app, we've got an orange box. The orange box shows you the area for the maps or the map area that you've already downloaded. So if you're trying to have multiple layers of coverage like this, which can be really handy in the backcountry, um, you can align our blue box pretty much over the orange box, click and drag, and you've got an identical coverage with your new one. However, if we look at the top of this screen, we've got not necessarily a problem, but something that might need some adjustment. We've got a lot more tiles and a much bigger file size. Um, to change this, we could go for this, but uh, it's going to take a little more room on your phone. I'm going to slide the max zoom from 1 to 12,000 to the left to 1 to 24. Watch what happens to our file size. We're going to go from 12 megs down to 5 megs, which is a little bit more reasonable. Let's go for that and save it. Once again, we tap Save in the lower right hand corner. Give our map, we'll call this St. Helens Satellite. Download, it's going to chunk away, take a little more time because the file size is a little bigger. And again, upper left corner, menu, maps, save maps. Now we have our two saved maps in there. So cool, we've done our two of our first three tasks. We've downloaded the track to follow offline, and now we've downloaded this map data offline. And doing this will let you use your phone for a navigation tool when you are out of cell phone range. Our third task is to add some waypoints and see how the guide me function works. We're going to go back to our main map. We'll turn it on the cycling topo layer and say we want to add a waypoint at the trailhead, which is always good practice. To do this, we tap the waypoint icon in the very top row. That's the fourth icon over, and it looks like a little pen with a plus sign next to it. One tap on that brings up our, our uh, waypoint menu. I almost always choose the top one, which is Create Waypoint. Tap that once. And now we have a screen with a waypoint and a little blue circle around it. This is very handy because you can zoom in on the map, zoom in and out, and drop it wherever you want to by touching on the circle and dragging the waypoint around to the pre precise spot where you want to drop it. You always want to give your waypoint a name. The default is the date and time, which is not real helpful when you're out in the woods. So we're going to call this car. At this point, we can click Save. But for now, we're going to, I'm going to tap Save and Guide, which does something oh, done, and then Save and Guide. Let's see what's going on now. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. When you click Save and Guide, I have this orangish red line that's been drawn on the screen. And at the bottom of the screen is some very helpful information. It tells me from my current position in Portland, as the crow flies, it's 52 miles and a bearing of 29 degrees to get from where I am to that waypoint. Now, unless I was a hummingbird, I probably would not be going that way. But when you're out in the woods trying to navigate, oh, sorry about that. When you're out in the woods trying to navigate between two points, having that distance and bearing is very helpful. Um, as far as a battery saving technique, what you probably would want to do to move between bearings far apart is to pull up this screen, get a quick distance and bearing. You can turn it off by tapping the big X at the lower right corner. 
and uh, then get out your compass, put your phone in airplane mode to save some batteries, get out your map and compass, and proceed on that line. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Again, the three core functions of Gaia GPS, importing a track, downloading maps for a track, and adding waypoints. Uh, if you would like to learn more about this app, there are some great instructional um, info at the Gaia website as well. This is a very nice feature of this app. If you go to our upper left corner and settings, they've got a user manual here, the second link down, which is a pretty nice thing to have. That's it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.